Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Waller's Wallet and a few weeks back, I took a look at the different travel portal costs when it came to airfare. And after the video, I had multiple requests to look at the hotel portal cost as well. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at those hotel costs through the different travel portals. But first, if you're new to the channel, this channel is all about credit cards, credit card rewards, and really showing you how to use your points and miles to travel for less. So if that's something that interests you, consider subscribing and turn the notification bell on as well. So just like the airline comparison, we're gonna take a look at the Chase Travel Portal, the American Express Travel Portal, City Travel Portal, US Bank, and Expedia. Now to keep things as even as possible, I chose the same hotel when looking at each example because there are just so many more variables when it comes to looking at a hotel cost versus airfare. And for the cards I used, I used the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Pretty much you could use any American Express card here since none of them have a better portal redemption rate than any of the others. The City Premier and the Altitude Reserve. I also split my examples between hotel chains and non-chain hotels to see if there was a difference between them. So let's get into it starting off with our first example looking for at Sydney, Australia from August 10th to August 17th at the Hyatt Regency. Now when you were to book directly with the hotel, it's gonna cost you $174 per night or $1,212.21 for your stay. Now looking at the Chase Travel Portal, it's gonna be $175.95 per night and for your stay, it's gonna be $1,332.03 or 88,802 ultimate reward points. For American Express, it's gonna be $175 per night. And for the stay, it's gonna be $1,354.85 or 193,550 points. And for city, it would cost you $182.88 per night. And for the entire stay, it would be $1,399.79 or 111,983 points. And US Bank is gonna charge you $199.97 per night or for the stay, it'd be $1,399.79 or 93,391 points. And for Expedia, it's $176 per night or $1,354.85 for the stay. Now, the first thing that catches my eye is the $120 to almost $200 price difference when you were to book directly with the hotel or using a portal. And really, that hurts all the point values in this example. For the point redemptions, you have to give it the Chase Sapphire Reserve here, which was the cheapest portal option in terms of price in points. American Express is not even in the same league as these points because their points are worth so little for hotel points. But Expedia and Chase don't match, which still bothers me, and Expedia actually costs more than Chase in this example. Also, if you notice, the cost per night is a lot higher on the Altitude Reserve, and I'll explain why that is towards the end of this video. And City is just floating in the middle of the pack. Taking a look at example two in Tokyo, from November 2nd to November 12th, staying at the Tokyo Stay Shinjuku, um, and booking directly with the hotel is gonna cost you $165.31 per night, or $1,636.57 for the stay. And when looking at Chase, it's gonna cost you $155 per night, and for the entire stay, it's gonna be $1,681.96, or 112,131 ultimate reward points. American Express is $155 per night, and for the entire stay, it's gonna be $1,709.94, or 244,277 points. City comes in at $165.71 per night, and for the entire stay, it's gonna be $1,816.98, or 145,358 points. U.S. Bank is gonna charge you $182.50, and for the stay, it's gonna be $1,824.98, or 121,665,000 points. And Expedia is gonna charge $155 per night, or $1,709.94 for your stay. And what I find pretty funny is the fact that some of the portals actually have a lower price per night cost than if you book directly with the hotel but the overall stay is higher through those portals than if you were to book directly with a hotel. And when it comes to pricing, Chase is actually more expensive than Expedia in this example. But when you look at redeeming points, the Chase Sapphire Reserve comes out on top with the Altitude Reserve coming in second place. American Express just flat out sucks again and City is in the middle of the field. 
Taking a look at our third example in Brazil from December 6th to December 13th at the Hilton Copacabana Rio de Janeiro. I may have messed that up. Booking directly with the hotel is going to cost you $108.67 per the night or on $892.38 for the stay. If you book through the Chase Travel Portal, it'll be $108.78 per night and for the stay, it'll be $874.51 or 58,301 points. American Express charges you $108 per night or for the entire stay, it's going to be $891.73 or 127,390 points. City is going to charge you $111.65 or for the stay, it'll be $899.52 or 71,962 points for your stay. U.S. Bank is going to charge you $139.91 per night and for the stay, it'll be $916.37 or 61,091 points for the stay. And Expedia is going to charge you $109 per night or $891.73 for your stay. And in this example, we see booking directly with the hotel not the best option in terms of price because that actually goes to Chase. And in terms of points, the Chase Sapphire Reserve once again comes out on top and right behind it is the Altitude Reserve. And have I mentioned how much American Express sucks for hotel redemptions? And again, City just isn't gathering any competition, just floating along in the middle there. Now taking a look at our fourth example in Rome from August 15th to August 22nd at the River Palace Hotel. And when you book directly with the hotel, it'll be $146.44 per night or $1,119.18 for your stay. And if you were to book to the Chase Travel Portal, it'll be $144.32. Your entire stay would cost $1,091.05 or 72,737 points. American Express is going to cost $144 per night and for your entire stay, it would cost you $1,111 or 158,751 points. And city costs $147.42 per night and your entire stay would be $1,029.42 or 82,354 thank you points. U.S. Bank charges $163.80 per night and your entire stay would cost $1,146.61 or 76,441 points. And Expedia is going to charge you $144 per night or $1,111.26 for your stay. The first thing to know about all of these hotel bookings is that none of these prices actually include the 82 euro or about $94 per night charge to stay at the hotel that is not included in these costs. And that's something you can't use your points on since that's paid for at the hotel. And in this example, we see multiple travel portals being better options when booking than booking directly through the hotel. And once again, the Chase Sapphire Reserve takes the top spot for points. But City comes in with the top cash price though. The Altitude Reserve, while being the second best point option here, is the most expensive in terms of cash price. And do I even need to mention American Express? And taking a look at our fifth example in Miami from July 18th to July 24th at the Four Seasons Hotel in Miami. When you book directly with the hotel, it's going to be $241 per night or $1,631.72 for your stay. The Chase Travel Portal is going to cost you $240.67 per night or it'll be $1,601.70 or 106,780 ultra reward points for your stay. American Express is going to cost you $240 per night and the entire stay would cost you $1,631.76 or 233,109 points. City costs $240.67 per night or that'll cost you $1,681.14 or 134,491 thank you points for your entire stay. U.S. Bank is going to cost you $280.19 per night or it'll cost you $1,681.14 or 112,076 points for your stay. And Expedia is going to cost you $241 per night or $1,631.72 for your stay. But once again, we see Chase and Expedia's pricing not matching up. And in terms of prices, American Express and Expedia are basically the same price. U.S. Bank is tied with City though for the most expensive cash price, 
but the altitude reserves 1.5 cents per point value helps keep it in second place in terms of point redemption. Taking a look at our sixth example in Cape Town from January 15th to January 23rd at the Onyx Hotel. Booking directly with the hotel is going to cost you $186.94 per night or $1,495.50 for your stay. And when booking through the Chase Travel Portal, it'll be $162.52 per night or you can look at it at $1,460.08 or $97,339 for your stay. American Express is going to cost you $162 per night or $1,495.20 or 213,600 points for your stay. And City is going to cost $168.76 per night or $1,518.80 or 121,504 points for your stay. US Bank charges $191.42 per night or $1,531.60 or 102,107 points for your stay. And Expedia is going to cost $153 per night or $1,405.52 for your stay. And in this example, we once again see Chase not only take the top spot in terms of points, but it also has a better cash price than booking directly with the hotel. We see American Express actually have a better cash price than booking directly with the hotel, but they still suck when it comes to your point redemptions for hotels. And City is content just being average here, and US Bank again has the highest cash price only to be saved by its 1.5 cent per point redemption value. Now there are a few things really to think about when looking at hotel bookings through the travel portals. Just like the airlines, the pricing was just different with each portal you were to use, which makes it pretty difficult to know if you're actually receiving the best value for your points. Now, if any of you ever redeem American Express points for hotels, I'm disowning you. What's frustrating about American Express is the cash price is competitive in every single example, but their point redemption is just so bad it's not even funny. I really wish this is something they would correct because it would actually be a pretty competitive option for hotels. Now if you had the Schwab Platinum card then you could actually cash out at 1.25 cents per point, but through the portal their value is just extremely poor. And while Chase was really off the mark when it came to airlines, they actually do a great job when it comes to hotels. When browsing inventory outside of these examples, they actually had more options for hotels than US Bank and City, and their cash price was consistently towards the top even in searching just outside of these examples. Not to mention the point option was the best option in every example we looked at today. Now when it comes to US Bank, while they were towards the top when it comes to point redemptions, they were the worst option when it comes to cash price through their portal. So while the airline portal value was a great option, their hotel value is not nearly as appealing. And one thing I didn't put in the example is the option to use the real-time mobile rewards. In examples where the cost is lower booking directly with the hotel, you can use your altitude reserve points through the real-time mobile rewards and in some cases it would have been the top option. But we were looking at portals here so I didn't include that option, that's just something for you to keep in mind. Also one thing that US Bank did that I liked that I wish the other portals would do as well is the fact that they account for the taxes in the nightly price when you're searching for hotels. And the other options may have had a lower cost per night but the taxes show up in the checkout. US Bank, while their costs were more expensive in these examples, does offer a bit more transparency with their pricing, which is something I actually can appreciate. And it feels like City is just happy to be invited to the party. They aren't great, nor are they really a terrible option. They could do so much better though if they offered a card with a 1.5 cent per point redemption value, but I doubt we'll ever see that for them. Then we have Expedia, and I'm still bothered by the fact Chase and Expedia's pricing just don't match. But if you were to book with Expedia, you can actually go through a shopping portal when you were to book to make your reservation. And that's going to help you earn extra points or cash back, but their pricing was in the middle of the pack and really wasn't anything spectacular. So tell me, what are your thoughts on the pricing differences between the portals for hotel bookings? Hey, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you know somebody who might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them. And if you want to help support the channel, a simple way is to use the links on the website or in the description below. And if you like learning about credit cards, points, 
miles, cashback, or just flat out traveling for less, consider hit the subscribe button down below. And until next time, safe travels and take care.